What's going on, everybody? Today on First Cup, I'm going to tell you about yesterday's martial arts radio episodes. We're going to talk about martial arts and pop culture and even culinary culture and a whole bunch more. Stick around. We're rolling in 15. Where's my coffee? I got to pour coffee because I can't welcome the show without coffee. Two, one. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is Wednesday, Wednesday, September 8th, 2021. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. Good morning, Andrew and Jenny. You know what we don't have on? Where's the banners? Is it this one? This one. There we go. Ah, oh, I had that turned off because Andrew and I are starting to play around with this software with StreamYard. Martial Arts Radio yesterday we recorded our two episodes in StreamYard with the hope that maybe down the line we do some more of our episodes live. Yes, I understand the irony of discussing something exciting and using the word live while I'm yawning. But at least I'm not as exhausted as yesterday. Holy cow. Oh. Fortunately, one of yesterday's guests no-showed, so I took a nap. Took a 90-minute nap, woke up, felt amazing. It pretty much solved my, my sleep problem. And then recorded a really nice episode with someone. Dropped off a couple boxes at the post office of stuff people have purchased. I mean, like, holy cow, people are buying stuff? What is this? It's like we sell things. Uh, and then went and had my first massage in six months. And it was great. New practitioner. But she trained under the one that I really like. She was pretty good. Did some of her own stuff. Some of the stuff from, from her instructor that I like. There's probably more synergy between martial arts and massage than we talk about. Understanding of the body being able to intuitively read what people are, in this case, in need of versus, I guess, in a combat situation about to do or thinking. And technique. There's a lot there. Oh, look at all these people. Good morning. Tommy and Mel and Daniel. So many peeps coming in. But it was a good massage. I needed it. Came back. Made nachos. Went to bed. I posted on my personal Facebook page yesterday what if, if what are the three most important ingredients to go on top of nachos other than chips and cheese. And the consensus, I was surprised that there would be consensus. Consensus was sour cream, salsa. There wasn't consensus beyond that. But those two were, people agreed. Salsa needs, or rather nachos needs, sour cream and salsa. So I went out and I bought some sour cream. Actually, I didn't. I bought Cabot sour cream dip, which is basically salsa and sour cream together. It's amazing. It doesn't have the vegetables, but it has the flavor, the spicy flavor with the sour cream. Kind of perfect. And, uh, yeah. Nachos. Daniel says jalapenos. Why am I going to slap you, Andrew? Andrew says I could slap him today. Oh, maybe he's tired. Well, he was celebrating his... his uh, your wife's birthday or anniversary? Wife's birthday. Good morning, Stacy. Look at all my friends. Uh, what else happened yesterday? Anything? So Andrew and I recorded a couple episodes, and we did it here in the living room. Because when I went out to pack boxes yesterday morning, I realized that the warehouse was a disaster... And I didn't want to clean it. I didn't want to put things away. So I didn't. So we recorded in here. And I slowly moved more and more of the office into here. There's lighting in here now. Oh, I could have done, we could have done fancy lighting for this show this morning, but we didn't. And the, uh, the camera is even mounted to the tripod right now. Usually I just kind of like hang it on the back edge. Getting really fancy here. 
Anything else happened yesterday? Oh, so I've talked about this. Only Murders in the Building. It's on Hulu. It is brilliant. Once in a while, a show comes along and you're like, holy cow, they get it. This is it. This is a phenomenal show. And if you're like, Jeremy, I haven't heard of this show. Why would I even consider watching this show? Okay, let me give you some names. Martin Short, Steve Martin, believe it or not, Selena Gomez, who has some of the best comedic timing I've ever seen. Nathan Lane, Tina Fey, Sting. I don't need to keep going. Andrew says it, he watched episode one last night. It was good. Yeah, it's exceptional. When Martin Short gets the opportunity to like fill his role, there are few that can do better than him. He is brilliant. He's an absolute genius. And this, it, it really feels like when they wrote this character, they're like, okay, Martin Short, and they just left a lot of space. And they're like, here's what we think maybe you want to start with. Just kind of go do it. And he went, okay. So good. He's so good. And it's, I haven't seen anything from Steve Martin in a long time. And you would, you would think that this would be over the top Steve Martin kind of fighting with Martin Short for screen presence. And he's not, he's going the other way. He's going, he's going low with it. And it's subtle. It's real. it's, it's great. Watch it. Just watch it. Uh, Frank says, where can you watch this? It's on Hulu. It's the only place I'm aware of that it is. What blew me away, so I'm watching the first episode, and I'm like, who's this girl? She looks kind of familiar. And then time's going on, and I'm like, this girl's holding her own on screen with Martin Short and Steve Martin. How is this happening? So I look her up. I'm like, oh, it's Selena Gomez. That's why. Now, I wouldn't have expected that she could act. I know she's a singer. I know she's a talented singer. Maybe not my, my jam when it comes to tunes. But I know she's got some skill. I don't know if she's acted before. But she's got a future. Like, oh, yeah. Andrew says, I haven't seen, seen Steve Martin since his Masterclass commercial. It's good stuff. So uh, I plowed through that in the last couple days. Um, they're dropping an episode a week. Whatever. But it's good. You should watch it. Uh, anything else happened yesterday? It was busy. Did a bunch of social media for client stuff. Did some email. I'm behind on email. Now today, today is an interesting day. So typically the two core things that happen on Wednesday. I do the books, which I'm not a fan of doing, but it's got to get done. And then after, I typically have a call with one of my clients. Well, that client is away, but I have two other clients and I have to go out to meetings. And the first one's at Panera. So I think I'm going to do the books and then just go over there and work. Just get get out of the space. Go somewhere different. Hang out. We'll see. Maybe we'll see. Oh, well, that explains a lot. Mel says she was, Selena Gomez was a child actor on Disney. Makes all kinds of sense now. Wizards of Waverly... See, this is what I, what I miss, not having kids. Wizards of Waverly Place, her Disney show from years ago, a regular program in our house. She was also in Walker, Texas Ranger, Trial by Fire. Apparently, I've just been missing out that she has this long-standing acting career. Who knew? All of you, not me. So, yeah, that's my day. And then cry. Um... This is, there's a good shot. This is my last karate class. Um, it's not quite what I want. So, 
I'm going to, I'm going to go into it today kind of with that mindset. Like, is this what I want to do? And really like be aware because the investment, here's the thing that's killing me. It's the, it's the time investment with all the travel and the prep. I'm putting in four hours for a 50 minute class. I don't, I'm not getting four hours out of it. I'm not getting four hours of value. I don't even know I'm getting 50 minutes of value. So Stacy says, not me. I didn't know. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm at least somebody else didn't know that Selena Gomez has a body of work. I can blame it on living in the woods. I don't know how, but we can. Okay. Let's see what you guys give me to talk about. Now, the first thing, um, over on the Facebook page, I posted, and I'm, I'm going to try to do this every day. Uh, once I create the event to say, hey, we're doing First Cup tomorrow, I'm going to go to First Cup Facebook page and say, hey, leave your comments here for tomorrow's show. And Jenny submitted, instead of pumpkin spice, maybe we could talk about burgers. And she referenced, she left a link to an article titled, Donnie Yen taste test John Wick and It Man burgers. Uh, in a delightful Instagram video, Donnie Yen visits the Burger Vision restaurant in Germany to sample their John Wick and It Man burgers. Um, I'll leave the link to that in the chat. Dennis didn't know either. Good. So we're, there's at least a few of us. So here's the article. Now, I'm not going to read the article. I'm not going to respond deeply to the article, but I wanted to talk about the culture part. Here's a couple burgers named after a famous movie character and a famous movie character based on a real person. Okay. Martial arts and specifically martial arts cinema continues to occupy a place in society. And I find that really interesting. If you go back, if you look pretty much throughout the history of movies, we've had martial arts movies. Losing my Wi-Fi. There we go. Now it's back. But it's rough. Why is my Wi-Fi being rough? Hold on. I'll plug in. I'm coming back. I'm right here. I promise I haven't gone anywhere. We don't have to do this in weeks. I only did it that one time. Come here, cord. Come here, cord. Come here, cord. See, I'm still here. Hi. There we go. And now we're plugged in. Stacy says, give me a Shang-Chi burger. It was awesome. I got to go see it. It's on the list. That might, you know, that might happen tomorrow. There's a chance that happens tomorrow. So, if you go back and the earliest martial arts movie I'm aware of being filmed, and obviously there were ones before, but the earliest American one uh, being Billy Jack. And people say, no, no, Jeremy, know your history. Billy Jack was filmed before any of Bruce Lee's stuff. Okay. Time-wise, so if we create a timeline, they're all cheesy, right? Billy Jack was cheesy. The Bruce Lee movies were cheesy. Karate Kid was cheesy. The Ninja Turtles movies were cheesy. In order to set something up where the heart of the movie is around fighting, there's you have to... You have to suspend some of the reality because that's not what happens in real life. And lately we end up with these movies like John Wick that are hyper-focused on the violence. And I guess to some people that's a little more plausible. But I think there's something that we all, whether we train or not, respond to in these martial arts movies. 
I think everyone, even if they don't train, looks at martial arts, whether publicly or privately, in a positive way. If you own a martial arts school, you know that when you meet someone and they find out that you're a martial arts instructor, quite a few of them will respond with, I always wanted to do that. Now they don't say, I always wanted to do that and there were all these reasons that I couldn't. I always wanted to do that. They get quiet, they get reserved, they pull back because they're a little embarrassed. They're a little embarrassed that they didn't do it, but they're a little embarrassed that something that so many people get picked on about is something they want to do. And I think that these movies and our embrace of martial arts culture as broader society, I think comes from that. People who don't train get to be a martial artist for a couple hours as they sit in the theater. Good morning, Susanna. Jenny says, I'm looking forward to Shang-Chi, no spoilers. Most of our How to Fight movies is coming from Andrew Archeezy as well. Certainly Tomorrow's is. Yeah, for sure. But not best of the best, right? That's not cheesy. It's just awesomeness. No, it's just lame. <laughs> not a good movie. It's okay, though. It's okay. So I, I think what, it, what I'm... What I want you all to pay attention to is how the world responds to martial arts and martial artists, not just the martial arts world. Because the more you're aware of it, the better we can leverage it as we move forward. Make sense? Okay. Jenny, great topic. Thank you. Now, Frank gave me some stuff. On this day in 1989, the film Kickboxer was released starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. Here are some interesting tidbits from imdb.com. So, Kickboxer. Kickboxer is one of those movies that I think fits in really well. It's not a good movie, but it's a fun movie, right? Movies can be fun without being good. Lots of things can be fun and not good. Food can be fun and not good. It's not good for you, right? They're not necessarily the same. Kickboxer is fun. It's not a good movie. I wouldn't call it a film. The constant background battle about how bad Best of the Best is versus how bad Andrew's perception of movies, his judgment skills, continues. The scene in which Kurt has meat tied to his leg and is chased by Xian Chao's dog was inspired by a real-life event in which a young Jean-Claude Van Damme was ordered by his karate teacher to wear a protective suit and withstand the attempts of a trained dog to pull him to the ground. Well, that sounds like a terrible idea. Instructors, don't make your students get attacked by dogs. That's a bad training method. That's yeah, a poor idea. Let's not do that. Nobody wins. Nobody wins in that, in that circumstance. The title held by Dennis Alexio's character in the movie the International Sport Karate Association, the ISKA, heavyweight championship, is a real championship and has been held by Alexio during his fighting career. The belt in the movie, however, is not modeled after the actual belt. Uh, so if you don't know, that guy, Dennis Alexio, was like a real fighter, was a real kickboxer, had quite a record. And he only did like three movies. And... I think Kickboxer was the only one I'd ever heard of. So. 
Well, look at all these comments coming in. Um, worse than painting offense. Much, much worse than painting offense. Van Damme is a real life jerk, says Tommy. Yes, we met. Can't fight either. Uh, apparently, Stacy says apparently it's common training for officers with a canine to be brought down by. Okay, I can I can see logic there. That's not like that's not putting a kid in a suit and having him work on balance. There's a big difference there. Or trying to turn a cement mixer from the inside. Oh, what movie was that? I have I have. Uh... Yeah, what movie was that? That's crazy. Um, Andrew says Alexio was legit 63 wins. Oh yeah, that was in Cobra Kai. Was that the end of the first season, second season? I do remember. Ah, coffee. I just got a message from Susanna. I'm on my way to work, so listening to your coffee thing in the car, I can't really comment. Ha! Well, hi. Thanks for watching. Well, listening. Listening? Watching? Oh, you all and your best of the best stuff. Uh, I don't know if I can do it from here, but I'm pretty sure on YouTube I can set up like a blacklist. So I could, any of you watching from YouTube could never say best of the best. Like you'd type it out and it would just, the comment would get censored. I'm not going to do that, but that would be funny. Uh, next, Michael Kesey was a technical advisor choreographer when he overheard the production crew say they were... Okay. Punctuation. Pardon me. Michael Kesey was a technical advisor choreographer. When he overheard the production crew say they were looking for a tall, oriental-looking guy with a background in Muay Thai, he volunteered and got the part of Tong Po. Because he's originally from Morocco, makeup was used to make him look more Asian. Yeah. Uh, he and Van Damme go back. They knew each other or trained together or something. Um, but I found that interesting. And it would be nice to have this movie remade. And I mean really remade. There have been a couple. There was a, a 2016 kickboxer, you know, retaliation, 19, like, vengeance or something like that. I forget what the, the subtitles were. Or the, Yeah. But I would like to see the, the plot of this film redone with more authentic training, like real Muay Thai training. Um, when I watch this film, the parts that stick out to me, like the number one part is kicking the tree. I think we all remember what go, watching that shin hit the tree. I'm I'm... I'm not sure that that's traditional, but it's at least believable. But then you watch other aspects, and it's not really... There's not a lot of uh, plausibility going on in, in that training. And just the fact that Tong Po wasn't even Thai. It would be nice to see, like, a big actual Thai fighter there. And I don't mean Thai fighter like Star Wars. I mean Muay Thai fight. Andrew says we should put Kickboxer on the list to do a How to Fight. We should. That would be a good one. Somebody would probably want to do that. Because we all want to fight Van Damme, don't we? <laughs> Daniel's going to try and get around my YouTube filter. Instead of saying best of the best, he's going to call it BOTB. Which sounds like a 90s era boy band. Oh, you guys are too much. <sighs> what else we got? I think that was it. That was it there. All right. Well, good stuff. I'm going to go. I'm going to go do some work. I've got... Oh, I've got another meeting in there, too. Me. Hmm. It was a Monday meeting that got moved to today. It's okay. Oh. 
I'm going to go take a nap. I'm not. I want to, but I'm not. I have plenty of work to do. There's a wholesale customer that wants like a whole bunch of stuff. So I got to do some, some packing and weighing and test some stuff out. See what we can do on a discount. Because they want a lot of stuff. So. Bigger than regular discounts. Did you know we have a wholesale discount? Uh, all right. So a couple things as I go. Don't forget, if you want to support us, Patreon is number one. And buying something at whistlekick.com with the code firstcup15 is number two. And, of course, all the other things you could think of, reviews and sharing social media posts and all that would be sweet. Leave me stuff for tomorrow. I'm going to go post a post on the Facebook page and try to come up with something. It doesn't have to be everybody. I'll tell you what. Here's the thing. I, there are, as of right now, if I remember, 20 of you on that page. If everybody left one post a week... That would be more than enough content. Frank does an awesome job making sure we have stuff. The more diversity we have, the better the show is. And let's face it, if you're watching and I read your question or your comment, you kind of dig that, right? So help me out with that. Help us all out with that. Makes the show better. I hope you have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.